I've never done a whole lot of ghost related stuff on this channel. When it comes to 40 in topics, I've always been far more interested in the UFO enigma. But a few months back, I received a suggestion that really intrigued me. The suggestion was sent over by Heliquin, and it was to cover what's known as the skull experiments. These experiments were basically revolving around research into the afterlife. I found a really, really interesting documentary that did an excellent job covering the skull experiments. And this video is essentially going to be a commentary about that documentary. You can find the link to that documentary in the description, and if you find this topic even remotely interesting, I would strongly encourage you to watch that documentary in its entirety, because we're only going to be skimming the surface in this video. So, with that, uh, with that out of the way, um, a good place to begin would be by showing a few snippets of the introduction to that documentary. After endless fake ghost TV shows, here at last is a documentary that presents the real evidence. Manu, are you there? Am I there? Yes. yes. Hello. The experiments featured in this program have been described by the scientists who witnessed them as some of the best evidence for life after death ever. We had a thousand hours of continuous communication with the spirit world. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Be quiet. For five years, the Skoll experiment continued to produce a vast range of extraordinary phenomena. More than in any other experiment in the history of the paranormal. It was witnessed by hundreds of visitors and monitored by a team of internationally renowned scientists and investigators. I must stress, it changes your paradigm. What they claim to have seen and recorded is so shocking that many will find it unbelievable. The experiments yielded numerous forms of evidence. This included uh, audio evidence, photographic evidence, video evidence, as well as something called apports, which I won't be getting into apports in this video. I wanna start with the audio evidence. So this next clip that you're about to watch is of an Italian researcher using an antiquated tube radio. But could the Skoll group communicate through Bacci's radio? Manu, are you there? Am I there? Yes. yes. <laughs> Hello, Manu. Thank you, Manu. After this, scientist Harry Oldfield, a colleague of the Skoll group, attempts further communication. We would like to ask the question, of the appearance of your space. Can you tell something about school? Thank you. Will the work progress? Thank you. This is what I needed to know. As this would be quite easy to hoax, measures were taken to greatly decrease the chance that any trickery was involved. Dr. Toriello was present during key scientific experiments that he says eliminated any possibility of remote transmission. One of the first of these experiments involved putting Bacci's radio inside a special device that shields it from all radio signals. Yet still, the voices continued. Second point, the radio was switched off. And do the voices were going through. The third and main point, that the tube or the valve of the radio were totally removed. Still the voice were going through. So you tell me how it's possible. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> They still needed to eliminate any possibility of fraud taking place under the cover of darkness. Therefore, the Skull Group devised several controls to help eliminate this possibility. 
One of these controls involved all participants wearing luminous wristbands. These bands were attached with Velcro, so they could not be removed without attracting attention. They also requested the use of night vision equipment. To date, nothing from the skull experiments have proven to have been fraudulent. However, there is reason to be skeptical. Here's what Skeptoid had to say. Due to the large number of investigators and sitters involved, the number and consistency of paranormal episodes observed during the seances and the lack of any finding of fraud, many believers often point to the skull experiment as the best scientific evidence that spirits do survive in the afterlife and can and do come back and interact with the living. A bit further down, Unfortunately, the skull experiment was tainted by profound investigative failings. In short, the investigators imposed little or no controls or restrictions upon the mediums, and at the same time agreed to all of the restrictions imposed by the mediums. The mediums were in control of the seances, not the investigators. What the Skull Report authors describe as a scientific investigation of the phenomena was in fact by any reasonable interpretation of the scientific method, hampered by a set of rules which explicitly prevented any scientific investigation of the phenomena. We persistently asked them to accept infrared cameras, and they said, not yet, it would interfere with the energy in some way. So we had to accept this with great reluctance. We were told that this phenomena could be developed in the light, but if it were, it would take an awfully long time to produce. Years and years, rather than a few months that it actually took us. Critics saw this insistence on darkness as an excuse to hide fraud. But participants to the Skull Experiment were not always in total darkness. So whether or not you buy the rationale given by the Skull team, that's up to you. Quite frankly, my position is who knows. As to from where they were receiving the instructions to carry out these experiments, the participants made an interesting claim. The Skull group insists that instructions on how to position the camera and mirrors came from their spirit communicators. So when it comes to the photographs, they... They got images of lots of different things, including um, supposedly people who had passed away. And I want to talk about these images real quick, and I'll put some of them up on the screen for you. As you can see, I mean, these essentially look like normal people. Now, getting into what they picked up in the video evidence things get a lot stranger here. And it's not really clear what we're looking at. I mean, you're going to see some sort of alleged entity, but it's not clearly human. They were told to set up a video camera in the dark cellar, aim it at a pair of mirrors so that it could only film its own viewfinder. While it was recording, nothing unusual was seen. But when the tape was played back, these remarkable pictures appeared. We had images on the video, sometimes of what looked like um, a tunnel of light. Other times, spirit faces were coming towards us. Sometimes what appeared to be a doorway moving. Skeptics claim these images were created by video feedback, occurring when a camera records its own output. But scientists have ruled this out. Video feedback doesn't produce this kind of result. As to what these extraordinary pictures represent, we can only guess, since their meaning was never explained to the Skoll group. This video, also totally unexplained, appears to be a ghostly face with moving eyes. Later, a few video experiments were attempted in full light, 
Again, nothing unusual was seen during the recording. However, on playback, this unworldly figure appeared. So it probably doesn't surprise you that the last video clip that you just saw was the one that intrigued me the most because, well, to say it the obvious, this looks like the classic alien gray. I'm not saying that that's what it is. I frankly have no idea. I did notice, however, that it doesn't seem to be very three-dimensional. It seems to be almost flat. This doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean it's not real, frankly. I have no idea either way. But what on earth is this? If it's a hoax, then, well, that's one thing. But if it's not a hoax, what is this? What they're going to talk about next absolutely floored me. And I want to preface this a little bit. So when I was in high school and military school, I had the awesomest history teacher in the world. He would teach us all kinds of fringe things about history that aren't usually part of the curriculum. And one of the things that I learned in his class was that Thomas Edison believed that technology would advance to the point sometime where mankind would be able to communicate with the dead. And in fact, he was actually working on a device to do just that right before he died. He never finished it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that belief was also shared by Nikola Tesla. The Skull Group say that their spirit communicators suggested ways of improving their experiments. For example, they told Professor Ellison, one of the SPR scientists, how to build a device for boosting communications via the tape recorder. But this information arrived in a very strange way. These images appeared after an unexposed film locked in the security box was later processed by the scientists. The scientists speculated about who was providing this technical information. Then initials at the end of the film seemed to have solved this mystery. I wrote to the uh, Edison Memorial people in America and they sent me a copy of one of his letters which contained his initials which look almost identical to the signature on this film. This matching set of initials convinced the researchers it was Thomas Edison providing this information. Not only was Edison the world's most famous inventor, he also had an enormous interest in the possibility of an afterlife. His intention to build a machine that could communicate with the dead made headlines around the world, but he died before being able to build it. Is it possible that through the Skull Group, he finally achieved this aim? Okay, so this video is quite different from my usual topic. Um, in fact, I don't believe I've ever done a commentary video on a documentary. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm actually working on several other videos right now. Um, but I've been meaning to tackle this topic for a while. And plus, this was, this was a, a pretty quick video for me to do because I really, really am trying to upload more frequently. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this interesting, then definitely check out the documentary linked in the description. And that's all I got. Hope y'all are doing awesome, and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.